This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I had to get on here one more time. Um, something happened when I actually got off the last time, and it really hurt my spirit. Um, I need to tell you something, and the Lord, I mean, immediately when I saw it, God said, speak about it. Okay, I'm just going to have to go into this, so bear with me. I'm going to have to go into this. I'm going to have to teach this thing for real. Hold on just one moment. Okay. All right, let me get to everything I'm trying to say here. So I want to explain to you something. When you sin, there's a darkness that comes over you, which is actually a curse. Come on, somebody. I'm going to explain myself in a minute. But when you sin, you have to understand what happens. You give Satan permission. Yes, you do. To mess, to wreak havoc in your life. It's the same as when we come to God. We give God permission to anoint us, to order our steps. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And, and I'm going to go ahead and I want to read two scriptures that's going to show you where I'm going with this. Because a lot of you are going through things and you thinking, okay, well, I'm just going through. No, it's because of your decisions. It's because of some of your choices. And the crazy part is, if I want you to check it out. And that's not to judge people or bash people. But the next time you see somebody that's laden with sin, like they're in it heavy, look at their demeanor, look at their spirit. Look at their complexion. It's a dark complexion. It, it, they're real dark. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Okay. Do y'all remember the curse of Cain? Let me read something to you. The narrative of the curse of Cain is found in the text of Genesis 4, 11 through 16. The curse was the result of Cain murdering his brother, Abel, and lying about the murder to God. When Cain spilled his brother's blood, the earth became cursed as soon as the blood hit the ground. But also, there was a mark that was on Cain. Now, scholars say that it was a curse. The mark was the curse. That's the same thing I'm saying. That when you sin, you give the enemy permission to, to just mess with your life. And, and hold on. You have to understand. God has to allow it. Because that's why he says free will and free choice. A lot of people think it's all good. Just because you're doing what you want to do. There's going to be consequences one way or the other. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. But I want to go on another um, journey. Just a little. I want to read you something else. Hold on. Just one moment. Let me get to the, the place. Because, and, and I'm doing this for a reason. I, I just don't ever just do something just to do it. Okay. All right, so I also want to go with, oh no, leave that off. Let's see. Okay, so let's go also about Job. Do you remember when Satan asked um, God, he says, you know, he says, have, have you considered in Job? He said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, yeah, but if you let me touch him and do all kind of stuff, he'll curse you to your face. That is the same thing that we go through. And I think you guys don't understand the same tests and trials that they went through. We go through. Come on, somebody. So let me read you that scripture. Okay. And that is in Job first chapter verse 12. It says, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself, put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, meaning that you could do whatever, but don't touch his life. You don't hear what I'm saying. Even when Christians do things that they're not supposed to do, that's what God says. Go ahead. I'll let you touch them, but not their life. That's why they'll go through or we'll go through and we won't die. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says a, a just man falls seven times and come back up. But each time the law allows something. Oh, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere with this. Let me tell you something. My brothers and my sisters, especially those of the household of faith, you have a true enemy that's after you 24-7. Be not, <laughs> be not weary in well-doing because I'm telling you right now, he's after us. He is always looking, creeping, lurking, and watching. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and go here. You think they don't watch me? I got someone here watching me right now. Don't like me, but they'll watch me. I wonder if she real. I wonder what she going to mess up. She always talking about somebody else. She always talking this. Waiting. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all understand the game, right? It's a game. You have to stay prayed up. You have to stay with a made up mind. And you got to always be on guard. You got to guard your heart. Your eyes, your choices, the people that you dwell with, the people that you trust. I'm going here for a reason. I am seeing too many mighty men and women of God fall. 
because of foolishness. Oh, I'm going here because you didn't test that person because you didn't test the spirit by the spirit. You see, everybody just can't come up to me and say, oh, I'm a, I'm a child of God and I love God and Apostle Deanna and I want to be your friend. The devil is a lie because I'm going to test you. Oh, yes. Think it's a game? Try me. I'm testing everything. Hold on. Family, friends. It does not matter who you are. And even after you end, let's say we friends, I'm still testing you. The devil is a lie. Remember Judas. Oh, come on, somebody, I'm going somewhere. Too many people fall in God says. And then when there's a mark that's on you, you have to understand now Satan has permission to really wreak havoc in your life. That's what I'm talking about, a mark. The same mark that we have in our foreheads that you don't see, but it's the anointing of God. Come on, somebody. It's the spirit of God. You are marked. That's the whole thing I'm talking about. You are marked. But who marked you? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And who is still marking you? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because every time you sin, there's a curse that go forth. Hallelujah. Every time you do what God calls, there's a blessing that comes forth. It's Deuteronomy. That's why they have a whole chapter of it. Blessings and cursings. Blessings and cursings. Which one, hallelujah, are you actually allowing into your life? Count the cost, men and women of God. You are too anointed and too appointed to allow Somebody to come in off the street or even in the church to make you miss your blessing or to cause you to fall over what? One night of pleasure or a cheap thrill. You remember that song? Cheap thrills mean nothing. Hello? Catch your heads. Catch your heads. It's not worth it. That's why you stay prayed up. God don't let me fall. Because guess what? We've all fallen. Oh, come on, somebody. Let's be real. But now that you have fallen, look like you would understand that, wait a minute, I can't do this again. I can't be going around a circle. Come on, somebody. The chosen of Israel went around and around. 11-day journey. Some say a 10-day journey. Took 40 years. I know you don't want to be one that keeps going around. And you wonder why. You wonder why. You got to stop and count the cost. When I saw what I saw, and, and this was like 20 minutes ago, it hurt my heart. I can tell this sister is in sin. It's written all over. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And that's not to judge and bash. I'm trying to tell you, count the cost. I know some of you ladies are tired waiting on a husband, but that don't mean you get to go sleep with broke Joe. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And I'm not talking about monetarily. Because anything or anybody that gets you to stop serving your God is not of God. It could be a job. It could be a family. I don't care who it is. I don't care anybody and any who, anything stops you from serving God is your enemy. Yeah, I say it just like that. Just like that. So that was a short one. I just wanted to get up on here because that really hurt my spirit when I saw that. I was like, wow. And immediately God told me what it was. Let me tell you something. Men and women of God, especially men and women of God, the two things the enemy going to always send at you is a fine man and a fine woman. And hold on. They're going to have everything you ever thought of. Money, car, houses, smelling good, looking good. Y'all don't understand me. You better have enough strength and anointing to say, devil, you are a liar. That's all I'm saying. Hallelujah. And that's it. That's it, Carla. You have to say, God, increase my wisdom and discernment. I pray for that every day, every day, every day. God, don't let me fall. God, don't let me fall. And hold on. Sometimes you got to be like Joseph, even when you get in it. Because sometimes you will miss it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because we're only human, right? Even if you're in that situation, you better run, Joseph, run. <laughs> as far as, no, run, Joseph, run. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. All right, so count the calls. Count the calls. Don't let nobody steal your oil. You have not come this far to let a devil make you fall in any area of your life. And you know what? I'm so, I'm so mad at what I saw. I'm going to pray for y'all right now. Stretch your hands out. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every sister and brother that's under my voice, Father God, child, man, it does not matter, young, old, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, that you strengthen them, Father God, in their walk, in their talk, Father God, in their wisdom, in their discernment, Father God, I pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Satan, I'll gnaw every plot, every plan, every assignment to the root of that thing, oh, right now, I 
devour it. I say that the assignment, Father God, is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and burnt up by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to his name. Oh, Father God, increase their wisdom. Increase them, Father God. Hallelujah. Let them have good, make good choices, Father God. Let them stand strong in the Lord into the day of our coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. For it won't be long, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if they do fall, Father God, give them the strength to get back up and never stay down in the name of Jesus. Oh, I decree and declare to be so. Hallelujah. No guilt, no shame, Father God, in the name of Jesus. No tormenting spirit. Hallelujah to his name. Oh, Father God, I decree and declare to be so as a child of the living King, as a servant of God. God, you say, if any two shall touch and agree, if any two shall touch and agree, if any two shall touch and agree, I touch and agree with them right now, Father God, even for finances. Some of them are going through financial difficulty, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you show them away, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, I decree and declare to be so, Father God, right now, this day. And yes, in this lifetime, it shall manifest in Jesus' name. Oh, Father God, I say that this prayer will not be hindered, stopped, or blocked, but will accomplish what it was sent out to do in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. And let us all say together on one accord, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. This walk is not easy. This walk is not easy. This walk is not easy. I promise you. But if we were out there going through it, I know you ain't going to let no devil come in your life and you save and sanctify and make you miss it. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah to his name. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers for that is who we are. God bless.